Hey, I'm Nick. And I'm Allie. And this is the Butt Have You Tried Bookshelf. <laughs> did you like that reading of it? It's, I a did. Little, it's a little bit more storybook almost, you know, like gather around children for the Butt Have You Tried Bookshelf. That'd be fun. Just a little like story circle. Yeah. But it's just Butt Have You yeah, Tried. Yeah, but it's a live version of Butt Have You Tried. Yeah, I think the fans would go wild. Absolutely. <laughs> How are you? What's new? Well, a week of my life was sacrificed to COVID. Yeah. But I'm doing better now. Okay. See, I got it when it was cool. I don't know what you're doing now. This is the first time I've had it. Yeah. So far as I know anyway. That's like, no disrespect, but that's lame. Well, to get I it was trying point. really hard to not. I yeah. was like, yeah, I've made it this long without yeah. it. I'm just going to like try and. But I mean, like, I guess it's not realistic to just expect that I'll like never get it ever. Yeah. And so probably it was just a matter of time, but yeah. I was a little mad about that. Yeah, for sure. Well, I remember, I can't remember if it was, tw- I think it was 2020. I think it was like straight up 2020 when I got it, like late in the year. And uh, I do remember like I was sitting down to dinner and I'd been feeling a little sick. And so we were kind of keeping distance, but I, I took a bite of food and I was like, huh. And I took a couple more and realized I had no taste. And it really was, it was like a horror movie. It was like, bah, bah! Yeah, that's like you some know, massive like, body horror yeah! stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, so it was uh, oh, it was intense. It was uh, it was really intense. So I'm glad you're feeling better. I also was sick, um, not quite as long as you were, but mine was just a cold. And I, you know, I went to the doctor and I, you know, I tested negative and all that. Um, but I was still pretty miserable. But I did a lot of binging. I, I also did a lot did a of lot TV of binging. binging. So we'll it got have to, to the point that like. Because, again, I was sick for a while. Like, I was out of work for an entire week. Yeah. That's the longest I've been sick in so long. Yeah. So long. It really takes it out of you. It really does. But by the end, I was like, I don't even want to binge anymore. Like, I've binged so much that it's starting to lose its appeal. Yeah. Well, as I've said many times, I'm not a good binger, you know. So, like, in situations like that, I was really lucky to, uh, to find a show that worked for me. So, let's get into it. Let's jump right into what we binged while we were sick. What we binged while we were sick. Tell me. What was it? What was your go-to? Okay. So, I rewatched all of The Babysitter's Club on Netflix. How old is that? Uh, Only a couple of years old. Okay. And I've already seen it like three times as wow. of this last sickness. Have you read the books or like the I read some of like the Rain books when I was a kid. Graphic novels or anything? I, I don't think I've read any of those graphic okay. novels. I looked at the style of those graphic novels and I was like, Yeah, this is really cool and it's like definitely a, a correct interpretation of the Babysitters Club, but it's just like Not the look you. of the characters okay. isn't how I imagine yeah, the Babysitters Club. Yeah, that can be Club. tough sometimes. And I was like, I don't, I don't think I can do this. They look really cool though. The Babysitter Man, the Babysitters Club. You know, I mean, that was I want to say '80s, at least '90s, but I feel like Babysitters Club started like way early, like that, because I definitely remember like friends reading them and them being like in the school library and everything. I never would have predicted the like resurgence that that keeps having because it was also like have you ever heard of like Sweet Valley High? I've heard Sweet, of it. It was kind of like, you know, it was like novels aimed at like a slightly older crowd than Babysitter's Club. And, you know, they were like very dramatic and everything. Those were like sort of you grew out of Babysitter's Club and you went to Sweet Valley High. Uh, those have not had the same mm. resurgence as uh, Babysitter's Club. They didn't have quite the same charm. Maybe I feel like Boxcar Children tried, you know, like there was a movie not that long ago and they tried to be like all new, cool Boxcar Children. But I think I feel like Boxcar Children never goes away, but it's never going to like have that yeah it's never gonna be on the top yeah for sure it weirds me out so much that the first boxcar children is like totally different yeah adventures eating berries putting milk in the stream living in a boxcar and the rest of them are like murder yeah (laughs) i know i know it's hilarious i don't understand how that happened yeah because i love that first book like the the first book and then but after that it yeah it's, yeah it's a weird use of a property like that to be like, all right, we like the the premise, I guess these kids living with their grandpa, you know, and now they're going to solve mysteries. Well, I guess some of it might be like that change. Well, after the first one, like what else do they, you know what I mean? Like they're not living in the box car. There's nothing about the box car. Children begs a sequel either. No, you know what I mean? You're not not. like, what happens next? No, we're done with the box car. 30 or 40 of them. I think that's a low ball number, Uh, but (laughs) Same with Nancy Drew or Hardy Boys, you know, like those keep trying to get a foothold here and there. And I think they're kind of existing in the same space. Like they're around, Yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. They're never going to go away, but I don't think they're ever going to have quite the same. Yeah. The same boom. Did you, what was your go to like as, as a kid? Like when I'm talking like, you know, eight to 12, let's say, was there a series that you were like, I must read? 
I don't know if there was one particular series that okay. I was like really, really reading in that kind of binge format. Okay. Like, like I read some Nancy Drew. I didn't read any Hardy Boys until my brothers were like old enough for Hardy Boys. Okay. And then I overheard a lot of like Hardy Boys reading. <laughs> okay. Um, in the periphery, and I read I read a decent amount of Boxcar Children. And I read random Babysitter's Club, but I don't think that there was like one series that I was like, I'm I'm going to read every single go book distance. in this okay. series. I waited every Scholastic Book Order to see if the next Clue book was going to be in there. And they were like little sort of like minute mystery kind of stories. You know, they'd be like 10 pages or something. And then you'd have to figure out, all right, who did it? And I loved those. Like I devoured them. So that was that was definitely my primary. I also read this series called the um the tcdc the three cousins detective club oh. and it was three cousins solving mysteries i mean and that sounds fun i loved both of those those were yeah did you ever read any of the like secret seven and famous five books no i read quite a few of those okay and by quite a few i think mostly just like the random ones that my parents happened to own that okay. were on the bookshelf and i would just like grab yeah. whenever yeah. i didn't whenever i read all my library books already okay. i guess all right and those were also like some collection of friends and cousin, cousins solving, solving mysteries. mysteries. Got to do it. Right. You got to get in there. I love a good, a yeah. good mystery. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So back to the original question. You binge the Babysitter's Club. I binged Club. the Babysitter's Club. How long? Club. How many series? What, what are we talking about? There's two seasons and okay. there are like eight or nine episodes okay. each. So it's really not that much. But yeah. I did watch it all in like less than 24 hours. Yeah, that's, so, that's something. Yeah. Yep. But I think the Netflix adaptation is really good at like keeping that original heart of the series but okay. also definitely making it feel up to date i feel like which they, can be hard to do which for sure can be really hard to do and i feel like the casting was just really well done all the characters feel right and there's like some changes to the care like some of the characters and you know but they all they all feel very much the way they should okay and it's just it's just cute and wholesome all right so, so that was your primary binge that was show. my primary binge okay uh, for me, it was Bosch. Have you ever heard of Bosch? I don't think so. Okay. Michael Connolly uh, writes this series of books about Harry Bosch as a title character. And I, there's a lot of the books now. And I love the books. Like I've read, I don't know, I've read probably seven or eight Harry Bosch and uh, probably three or four of the Mickey Holler books and just a couple of standalones. I always wanted to watch this series. I've never had the streaming service that has it on and it's not available anywhere. Of course. So we have it temporarily. Uh, and when I was sick, I watched two seasons of Bosch, 10 episodes each. Uh, really good, tight mysteries. And the first two seasons are based on books that I have read. Uh, so it wasn't spoiling anything. But it had been long enough ago that I didn't remember the individual beats mm. of what was happening. Nice. But uh, I think it's a really good adaptation. He's he's kind of a different... Um, Titus Welliver is the main uh, character who plays Bosch. And I think you'd probably recognize him if you saw his face. From He's just one of those guys who's in uh, lots of stuff and pretty recognizable. Um he feels like a little bit more of a bruiser to me than I pictured for Harry Bosch, but I rolled with it really fast because it's a good interpretation of the character. So I did two seasons of that. I want to say there are seven or eight, and then there's a spinoff that follows Harry Bosch sort of into retirement, which the books did the same thing. It was like he sort of is a, you know, PI, I guess, uh, in his later years, and so there's a series like that too. So really liked it. And I was watching that by myself, so uh, when my wife was back, uh, we were going to watch something. And so I started watching The Lincoln Lawyer, hmm. which is uh, a Netflix show. And those characters are connected in the books. Like the books overlap oh, cool. and they have a connection. The shows aren't connected, but in my in my heart they do. They that, do connect. Of course. How could they so, not? So yeah, it's just a big Michael Connolly binge a couple of weeks for me. Lincoln Lawyer took some getting used to because the movie uh, is Matthew McConaughey as the main character. And it's that's perfect casting. I mean, that's that's exactly right. And the Netflix show goes a very different route, very different style of, huh. of guy. It's a it's a big swing on an interpretation for um, Mickey. And I did not like it at first. And the more I kind of settle into it, I'm like, yeah, all right, I see it. I just got to sort of like wipe the McConaughey version right. like, out of just my mind. Just kind of forget about that. Yeah. And it works pretty well. So, yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking both. So... Yeah, a lot of Michael Connolly. And it made me want to pick up some of the books, too. So I was looking for like where I left off. Because it's been a while. It's been a couple of years, probably, since I read the last uh, the last Harry Bosch. 
All right, so tell me, tell me what else you got going on. Well, let's talk movies. You watching any movies? Yes, I watched. We again Sick. the binging. Six. Six. You, you and your husband both taken down. Yes. Yeah. So we also finished um, Superman and Lois. Everything that's been hey. released so far. Right. Season three is a quite a cliffhanger. S- yes, and I was kind of like, uh. uh yeah. <laughs> I did yeah. not sign up for this level of cliffhanger. I know. And also, it was hanging in the balance for a long oh time. Oh my gosh. Whether or not they renewed it. Yeah. Well, and I heard that they that like basically only the Kents are being billed as like actors on the show yeah. at, for season four and everyone yeah. else is like guest appearances. Yeah. The Kents and Lex Luthor. Yikes. Yep. So I'm a little apprehensive about how, what that will mean. It almost has to be a time jump. I, I don't know how no. you don't do that. You know, I don't know. I I'll don't be know, interested to see for you sure. You know, like, but I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. Superman Doomsday was like the talk of uh, comic books in the '90s. So, if they follow that trajectory, which I won't spoil for is you, is that the like scary Superman-ish creature thing? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. and that's definitely a different approach to Doomsday than the comics was. But the this like clash between Superman and Doomsday was like r- a truly a legendary story. Um, they got like news coverage at the time because it was such an ordeal oh like in comic books. Yeah. I remember cutting it out of the newspaper like legit. <laughs> I was in fourth grade and we had to bring in a current event and I cut that out this thing. About, that event? was my current That's event. Incredible. Yeah. They were not. They they weren't impressed. But I was right in the long run because it's still a milestone in comic book history. So all that to say, if they follow the Superman Doomsday trajectory, that could be really interesting um, probably wouldn't have been my choice for how to end this show that started so small uh, and, and now is like at epic levels, but I'm loving it and I'm, I'm ready for the final season. So, you know, good. I'm glad you watched it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of weird casting though, okay. that, was, that was, I feel like a different interpretation of Lex Luthor. Than yeah. I've talk about a bruiser, before. right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I feel like I usually like think of Lex Luthor and this might be because of um, Lois and Clark, which yeah. I watched a lot when Loved I was in it. like middle school maybe yeah. but i feel like i always think of lex luther as more of like a you know like a suave yeah. millionaire playboy kind of like like a kind of an iron man-y kind of figure sure. i guess yeah and so it was like definitely weird to be like oh yeah this like huge yeah. scary looking dude with like this giant blonde beard uh-huh. like what yeah, it's a really different interpretation. And Lex, like the Lex you're talking about, was really like the Lex Luthor of the 90s, who um, they kind of used all the stuff going on to sort of reintroduce Lex in, in like the John Burns Man of Steel era as this sort of like, you know, schmarmy businessman who like kind of presented as legit. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, he'd always pretty much been a straight up mad scientist. Like he was, hmm. it was much more like diabolical and just like, yes, Lex Luthor's a villain. And, and making him sort of a, a, a corporate villain uh, and sort of a Wall Street villain was made perfect sense in the 90s and right. remains <laughs> yeah. very, very much in <laughs> tune still with relatable, uh, yeah, I would today. Say. So having him just be this straight up like he will beat the crap out of you kind of guy. It's definitely an interesting take it on is. it. Uh, I, again, that was another one where I was like, I don't know about this, but if, you know, a little bit into it, I was like, yeah, let's, let's roll the dice. Let's see I'm what happens. I'm definitely interested to see how that plays out. Yeah. Speaking of that guy who played Lex Luthor, I knew him back from the uh, 90210 days where he recurred as uh, Tony Miller on Beverly Hills 90210. And I've been watching the show with my friend Kendra. We just finished season seven, which is kind of... um, Aren't there like 10? There are 10 seasons and then there's a five season reboot. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. So there's a lot. That's a lot. But season seven, in a lot of ways, is sort of the end of the classic era because they're out of high school, they're out of college, and the last three seasons are sort of like adulting, and it's a whole new (laughs) creative team and like writing team, and it it never, I hope Kendra's not listening because this will be a spoiler, but it never quite finds its uh, Mm. old school vibes again, and never, (laughs) I would say never really works again, but... So anyway, but I f- maybe this time I finish through, season seven. you'll feel differently. Maybe I will. Maybe. maybe I'll be like, yeah, let's see what they got. Why not? Okay. Also shows why. Oh, yeah, yeah. We watched the first two episodes of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina while Ooh, sick. Spooky. Spooky. I did like it, but I feel like maybe it was a weird pick to watch while sick because like my baseline tolerance for spookiness or anything yeah. is just lower. I remember discussing the others with you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Fair, 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 fair. But I did I did like it. So I'm thinking probably, again, now that we're done with Superman and Lois, that may be our next go-to show. Okay. And we also rewatched the first episode of Wednesday because 
it's just that good. You just have to. You just have to. Yeah. Created by the Smallville guys, by the way. Speaking oh, really? of Superman, yeah. Huh. I didn't yeah. know that. Did you ever watch Smallville? No. I don't hmm. think I did. I I uh hmm. I seriously considered watching it again because I think the aren't the like actors from Lois and Clark the parents in Smallville? Terry Hatcher does an episode as Lois's mother just once. Okay. And Dean Kane shows up as like a comic book villain, but just once. Okay. Well, I guess I got the wrong information, yeah. but the fact that they showed up did intrigue me. In the Supergirl show on the CW, Dean Kane plays Supergirl's like adoptive father and Terry Hatcher Terry Hatcher plays another character's mother. So they're okay. they're both kind of well, like cool. in the fray, yeah. But I've yeah. never seen any Smallville. Smallville. I mean, how do you feel about you? You like your teen angst. I do enjoy teen I angst. I think you could get on board. Okay. That's also, that's. I think that's also maybe even 11. It's at least 10 seasons. That's so much. Yeah. That's so much. It is. It's 10 seasons and then season 11 is like a graphic novel series. Also very good. It's very unlikely that I would be able to watch that many seasons. You just have to get COVID again. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. But I don't want no to. No big deal. Yeah. Once was enough. Okay. Do you have any other shows that, that you've been watching? No, I really haven't been. I've been watching more movies. I really had to like cut down my movie list because I haven't watched a lot of shows. Well, what do you got for movies? <laughs> well, I, my featured movie is a new one. It's a 2023 movie called No One Will Save You uh, with Caitlin Deaver. It's written and directed by Brian Duffield. Have you heard of this at all? I don't think I have. We watched it on Hulu. And it's about this lady who like lives sort of alone in, in a house uh, that you would love, by the way. Her house and her whole ensemble, very cottage core. I think nice. it would really it would really speak to you. Yeah, she's there and it's it's a sci fi thing. The cover of this makes it very clear that there's an alien angle to it. So mm. um, I'll just tell you that. So I was really impressed by it. And it was the kind of movie where like it ends and you're kinda of like, What does that mean? Like what was this all about? You know, and so <laughs> We were kind of like looking up like interviews with the writer director and stuff and just sort of like hashing it out. But I just felt like it works as a character piece. It works as a sci-fi. It works as, you know, it's it's pretty action heavy, honestly. See, I got no complaints. It was really good. I think I think you'd like it. I mean, that sounds cool. I think you'd like it. Yeah. What's your featured movie? My featured movie is Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Oh. Which is another sick, sick movie. <laughs> okay. Watching. All right. Wait, with- sick is in sick or sick is in ill i was ill but it, it I it's, mean, a, I mean, it's it was, a pretty sick movie yeah, so yeah, that's why yeah, i was yeah, confused yeah. it's kind of both i guess yeah this is one that i feel like i've heard about for years yeah. like for years people have been like yeah this movie is super great yeah and fine after multiple days of being sick and watching a lot of things and feeling a little tired of watching things this was this was what we selected as a movie that yeah. We still felt excited to watch, I guess. It was really fun. I thought it was very interesting and weird in ways that I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. It definitely lived up to the hype. Okay. So I like when I remember seeing it in theaters because I loved it. It's based on graphic novels by Brian Lee O'Malley, and I'd read all the graphic novels before the movie came out. So I was like really pumped to see this. Nice. And I remember we saw it with um, my wife's older sister and her husband, and they're, they're like, you know, six years older than us, something like that. And there was like younger kids in front of us. And it was like for Hillary and I, we were like exactly the right age for all the nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And it's like the people who were just slightly older than us and the people who were just slightly younger than us missed it, like just didn't get it. But I wonder if now enough time has passed that like regardless, the whole thing is just like nostalgia. So maybe you felt like connected to it, even though it's very like 80s, 90s kind of 90s, I think in particular. I think so. Like it was definitely a lot of the stuff I was like, well, this isn't stuff that I personally experienced, but it's stuff that I like recognize and that, that feels iconic. Yeah. So, so I feel y- like it worked because of that. Okay. And you haven't read the graphic novels. I have not. Oh, I think you'd enjoy them. I kind of have had them like in in mind for a while. Again, yeah. partly because I've heard so much about the whole yeah. Scott Pilgrim thing. So maybe now that I've watched it, which I know is kind of the wrong order, but whatever. I mean, you know, whatever. I Sometimes don't think that any, happens. It's not a bad time to read Scott Pilgrim is, is what I have to Fair say. Uh, stacked cast. Amazingly stacked cast. Oh my cast. gosh, I yes. mean, you know, Michael Sarah, uh, Brie Larson, Brandon Routh, Chris Evans, like everyone, everyone, Mae Whitman, everyone's there. Uh, love Jason Schwartzman in that movie as the villain, you know. It was definitely funny to see them all as like kind of young versions I know. of themselves though. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. For sure. I know there's the new anime out that that reunites the whole film cast. Yeah, I saw that. And I just am not interested in it. I don't I keep, <laughs> not at all. I'm no, like, I mean yeah. I feel like I should be. I mean it's Scott Pilgrim. I love that cast. I mm-hmm. love the story. But I'm just like I don't know. I read the comics, I saw the movie. I don't know that I really 
want more, I guess. Fair enough. I guess that does kind of cover more or less everything. Yeah. So I don't know. I watched the trailer for it and I was like, yeah, I'm not moved. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's on me. Get with the program. Who knows Come what on. my problem Come is. On. All right. I've got some hot takes for you, though. Speaking okay. of uh, the 90s, I watched the Blair Witch Project uh, with my wife and my niece, who is 16, and I never saw it. Like when when this came out, I was like, "This is the most terrifying commercial I've ever seen in my life. I will never watch this movie ever." But you did. But I did. I did. Our niece wanted to watch it, so we were like, "Let's do that." So we did. Uh, we actually ended up doing a double header with uh, the Blair Witch Project and Cloverfield, both sort of like, you know, classic uh, found footage movies. Okay. You know? Okay. Blair Witch, I thought, was really well done, and it has its like truly scary moments. But I just think like overall just as like a piece of film it was really it was interesting i i liked it quite a bit i didn't expect to okay i know there's like sequels that everybody hates but now i kind of feel like i gotta watch them so we'll see i mean, or you could just you could just assume that they're gonna be bad and, not. and just yeah just walk away from it like i'm doing with the scott pilgrim See, Sometimes I like to do that. I'm how's like, that you know for what? a crazy thing about me? I don't want to watch the Scott Pilgrim theme, even though I love Scott Pilgrim. But I do kind of watch the want to watch the Blair Witch sequels, yeah, even that though does I know seem they're a bad. Little twisted. Yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, I watched Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning. Dumb, bad. Just a bunch of old people sitting around a room talking, and then Tom Cruise rides a motorcycle off a mountain. You know, so makes sense though. I don't know. Do you care about these movies at all? Not really. Okay. Uh, in the 90s, <laughs> uh, when the first one came out, I remember, uh, I've told this story so many times, so sorry to my friends who are listening, but my friend Dan Christo won free tickets to go see Mission Impossible, like an advanced screening. And he got those tickets and we were all like, oh man, we're so jealous. And then he came and he was like, it's so stupid. The bad guy was and spoiled oh, the no. movie, like thoroughly spoiled the movie for everyone. And we were like, what is the matter with you? And he just didn't even, he was like, what do you mean? I, I don't, this, no, it's a whole movie. It doesn't matter. And I'm like, you idiot. So he did spoil the movie, but I still loved it. But I feel like <laughs> it's been diminishing returns for the last uh, 30 years at this point. That I, Mission Impossible is one that I, it's like, I don't know how I've gotten away with not seeing it. Yeah. Because it's like, I feel like looms fairly large in the like general. Yeah. Popular like well, just by its sheer staying power. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's crazy. I don't know. I mean, I don't know that it's like a must watch for you, but I would say like if you were ever curious, I think the first one holds up really well. And I don't think you have to be like, you know, my age to think that. I think it's a pretty solid, it's just very clever, you know, and like the the gadgets and stuff that it's so famous for, I think just work really well there. It's really tight. It's good acting from Tom Cruise and like the whole cast really strong, but did not care about Dead Reckoning. And I hate that it's a part one. And Ooh. is this a sequel that I have to watch? No. No? No. Even though I've watched all the others for the last 30 years. If you didn't care about Dead Reckoning, gotta walk away. then I feel like... I mean, I guess if you want to be a completionist and be like, I've watched yeah. all of these for 30 that, years. That is a compulsion that I have. But like, I feel like if you didn't care about part one, you're not going to care about part two. I know. Maybe I'll put it on when I'm like... Folding laundry. Yeah. <laughs> painting a room. <laughs> Reading a book like at the same time. Exactly. I watched uh, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes based oh, yeah? on the Hunger Games. Didn't care about it. That's kind of what I would expect. Didn't care at all. Like I saw that that was coming out. I mean, I didn't read the book when it came out because yeah. I was kind of like, meh. Yeah. But that was definitely how I felt when I saw the you know, yeah. film adaptation was coming out as well. I was like, well, meh. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's see if this golden goose has got anything left. Uh, loved the books. So I read the books for for the movies that came out, and I really, really loved them. Uh, I think the first movie is great. Uh, second movie is still pretty solid. Splitting up that last book, pure chaos. Didn't like that at all. I did read Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes when it came out. I didn't care about it. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> That's it was, why I haven't read it. I know, but I guess I kind of thought maybe they got it. Like maybe they can pull something out of it. Like maybe something will be there. Uh, we just had our wedding anniversary and like it came out that weekend. So we were like, oh, perfect. We'll go get a good dinner. Uh-huh. We'll see the movie. And we both were kind of like, mm, okay. Well, that's kind of a bummer. I don't know. Still love the originals. Uh, I watched Sea of Love, which is an Al Pacino movie from the 80s. And he plays a detective who's like on the trail of this serial killer. And he ends up sort of like dating one of the suspects and then it's like <laughs> what is she gonna kill him so it was pretty good i liked it i like it kind of fun i mean i like al pacino in most things do you know who al pacino is let me sit down before you i answer. don't know if i would recognize him but i know <laughs> the name <laughs> okay 
All right. So you never had to like watch The Godfather and he didn't take any like film classes in college or anything? No. Nope. Okay. Not The Godfather. Most what? of what I know about The Godfather you seen comes Al from um, You've Got Mail. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Exactly. Um, I don't know. I don't know what uh, I don't know what you would have seen Al Pacino in. This is a game we should play. I'll list an actor, then I have to try to figure out what, if anything, you've seen him in. And I'm I'm drawing a blank. I can't think of anything. But on the topic of you've got mail, I did watch that new Meg Ryan movie. What happens later? Oh, how was it? So bad, <sighs> Allie. It was uh, it was so bad. It's her and David Duchovny, both actors that I love. Zero chemistry oh between no. the two of them. Oh, no. It's adapted from a play. And watching it, I was like, yeah, I get how this play could work. I get how a play is. But it all hangs on chemistry, you know. And at watching this movie, I feel like, so she asked Tom Hanks and he said no. Is that what happened? Because I don't know. It was a real, it was a, it was a painful watch, I think. I'm it still going to have to watch it, but that is disappointing. It had its moments. It had its moments. But it also sort of feels like she hasn't really evolved. Like it, it it feels like she's still kind of playing that same character that we all love. Absolutely. You know? How could you not? But it's like it just didn't translate. I don't mm. know. I don't know. It was weird. Duchovny was very low key. Um, I think might have worked with a different kind of chemistry, but the two of them just really didn't have it. So I was disappointed to see that. And finally, I watched a documentary on Albert Brooks called Defending My Life, which I really liked. It's just Rob Reiner sitting down with him. You don't know who these people are. I definitely don't. But (laughs) but it was uh, was good. You know what? Albert Brooks voices the dad, Marlon, in Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. Yeah. There you go. I did it, everyone. I did it, everyone. <laughs> Rob Reiner directed to When Harry Met Sally. Oh, I like When Harry Met Sally. Okay, so there we go. We connected it. That's, there's your... Uh, Progress has been made. Five degrees of Kevin Bacon. Do you know who Kevin Bacon is? Uh, yes. Okay. But it's definitely because of... The Guardians the Holiday Guardians Special. Holiday I did it. Special. I won the game. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Like, when they were like, oh, yeah, you know, like... Peter Quill has talked to so, so much about Kevin Bacon. I was like, well, I recognize that name. And then they like had the whole actual sequence with Kevin yeah. Bacon. And I was like, well, I guess that's who that is. Okay. Uh, have you seen X-Men uh, uh, First Class? Nope. Oh. I somehow, again, haven't watched any X-Men movies. <laughs> and I right. don't understand that's how. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. it hasn't happened. That's, I think that's a failure of your husband because he's he goes deep into comic books. So yeah. that's really on him to I think we just haven't been point. married long enough for that to happen. That's true. That is true. Eventually, all right. We'll eventually give him a pass. Did we cover all your movie hot takes? I still have some other hot takes. Let me have it. Okay. So we also watched, whilst sick, Palm Springs. Oh, the Andy Sandberg? Yes. Do you know who Andy Sandberg is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with, like, with the time loop movie. Yes, yeah, the time that's Andy loop Sandberg. movie. Yeah. I, thought th- I thought it was a lot of fun. I did too. I will say, though, that after we finished watching it, I was like, being sick feels like a time loop. Because yeah. every day you wake up sure. hoping that it will be different. And every day it's not. It's the same. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same. And e- every day feels just like every other day. But I thought the movie was really fun. I have seen another, like, wedding rom-com time loop movie and so at some point caleb was talking about this movie and he was like oh yeah there's this really great you know like rom-com time loop movie that i feel like you would like and i was like oh it's this movie you know like i think it's like love wedding repeat is the other one oh. you know with like this <laughs> actor or whatever <laughs> that's funny and he was like no what are you talking there it's weirdly it's it's a huh. weird that yeah they you both wouldn't exist. think that would be a premise that's repeated but but it is. it is and they're not that similar though i will okay. say uh, of course, the classic time loop movie would be Groundhog Day with Andy McDowell, Bill Murray. Have you seen that? I haven't. Okay. I have been meaning to for years. File it away. But I haven't seen it. Okay. Um, I also watched the first two Princess Switch movies. <gasps> okay. To be, to be ready. Doing your research. Doing my okay. research. I haven't done it because I want to be. I want to be fresh. You want it to be fresh. I want it to be fresh. I, I understand that. Yep. I figured I would be fresh enough, especially given that I've already You've seen them it like hundred times, three yeah. times yeah. or so. Yeah. So, yeah. um, we also rewatched. Something from Tiffany's, which is like a a relatively recent kind of Christmassy rom com. Okay, it has some like you've got mail kind of vibes. I like those vibes, right? Yeah. And it, we were talking about it as we were watching it, and it's like the the opening shots and everything. It's like in New York City, and there's like people walking by and Christmas trees and stuff like that. It definitely feels like it's trying to pull on some of those like earlier rom-com you know like back when rom-coms were still good most of the time yeah, yeah i remember yeah um and i feel like it, it i feel like it's 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 a good one that mostly lives up to that kind of um nostalgia factor do you have any attachment to keanu reeves and or winona Ryder? yes okay 
because <laughs> speaking of rom-coms, the Meg Ryan movie reminded my wife and I a lot of a movie called Destination Wedding, which I've is... seen that. Oh, you've seen it? I've seen it. That's a great movie. Ha. <laughs> that's a great, don't you think? Mm. I think that's a really... So weird, but really, so It fun. is so weird. Really strong, like, recent rom-com. Yeah. Well, because they're, like, basically the only two characters. Do you even ever it, see any other characters' faces? I don't think you do. And th- wh- uh, what happens later with Meg Ryan, you do see, like, there's lots of background extras but no one speaks except the two of them huh. so it, it is kind of a, you know it, it harkened back to that but destination wedding was just you know better by a thousand fold so i mean winona Ryder. you know yeah yeah what can you do i, what can I don't you know do? i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i also watched a tourist's guide to love which is a another recent rom-com okay. it was fine in it was set in vietnam zone. which was fun oh yeah i feel like like winter and fall season is kind of just like rom-com time for some reason yeah I feel the same way. My wife always wants to watch moody sci-fis, and I usually, um, like lately in particular, I have been in like a comedy or a rom-com kind of vibe. Yeah. So I feel like anytime Caleb and I go to watch a movie together, he's like, let's watch, you know, like sci-fi or action, you know, like uh-huh. something kind of like yeah. interesting and thought-provoking, and I'm like, let's watch a really cozy, fun yep. rom-com. Yep. I know Hillary and I keep being like, we need to just set days because what happens is it's like, we'll go and we'll be like, what about this? I don't know. What about this? I don't know. I was like, so we should just be like, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like you pick and whatever it is, you know, and then the other days I'll do it because we rarely like, we like a lot of the same things, but it seems like we're never in the mood for the same Mm -hmm. thing at the same time. But we usually like what the other one picks. It's just a matter of like getting over the hump of like pressing play well and i feel like sometimes also if you're like browsing through a streaming service it's like there's so many options and you're like oh yeah that like i've seen that that's fun you know or like oh that looks interesting but like it's hard when you have like more than one person picking a movie yeah to be like i am putting forth my vote for this like i feel like it just becomes like everyone like mentioning things and then you're like so have we come to any and you haven't come to any conclusions i think that at all that that you and Caleb and Hillary and I should enter into a pact <laughs> where when this kind of thing happens, we'll just text the other, like, which movie should we watch? And then <laughs> I'll choose options. for you and Caleb, <laughs> and you can choose for me and Hillary. And then, you know what it I mean? Sounds like it's a just, good, we a take good the plan, guesswork out of it. <laughs> we save ourselves so much time. That's the bottom line. Oh, man. I used to, I used to like, force some of my decisions off on my younger brothers okay because the decision was meaningless to them yeah but i just didn't i'd be like all right what should i do now this thing or this thing and they just kind of like choose randomly okay it worked surprisingly well yeah. i have to say okay all right uh your younger brothers have recommended you a lot of books that you have loved over the years is there any books that you're reading now that came from uh, a brother um, none of the books that i'm reading right now came from a brother too bad because that would be a great segue it would have been a really good segue the next thing I'm going to read is the Amulet graphic novel series. Oh, yeah. Because I made a deal with my brother oh. that he has to read all of the Penderwicks books because he's read the first few but hasn't okay. read the later ones. And I haven't read the Amulet books. Got so it. we're doing a trade. And he's already Seems about fair. two-thirds of the way through the first Penderwicks book, so I Got have it. to catch up. But graphic novels are fast, That's so true. I fully am confident yeah, you can in my ability through. to definitely, catch up. Definitely, definitely. What is your featured book of the uh, of the month? My featured book is Chasing Vermeer by Blue Balliette. Mm, never heard of this. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. Okay. This is like, so Ca- this is one that Caleb and I are reading out loud together. But Cute. I, yes. Cause we'll, <laughs> can we finished reading the whole Penderwick series. Yeah. And we were like, shoot, we need a new series, but we don't have an idea. And I was like, well, I have this like random kind of one-off book that I like. We could read that as a buffer period. So that's what we're doing. Kay. We're almost done with it. And... We, we started reading this and he was like, is this just like the Da Vinci Code for tweens? <laughs> and I was like, Maybe? That should be the tagline on the book. On the back, there yeah. is a review that really? says the Da Vinci Code for tweens. Oh my gosh. So that I feel like that basically tells you everything you need to it know. It does. It really does. Yeah. But it's about these two kids who um, have kind of this like investigation into like magical realism and stuff going on okay and then someone steals the vermeer painting a lady writing and is like sending letters to the newspapers about why they stole it and the kids are trying to figure it out yes but it's very um it's like big into like puzzles and it's also kind of artistic and it's one that i read a ton growing up and really liked and it has been fun to revisit it yeah i feel like it it does hold up nice okay uh i 
I struggled with uh, my featured book of the month because I I was trying to read some of like the hot books, you know, that everybody's reading in the library right now. So I read The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. Uh, I don't know. It was so dime store. It just, I, I got to give it props for being so readable. Like I really, I went through it quickly. I wanted to know what was going to happen. And then I got to the end and it was just like, this is, I don't know. This is just like a Lifetime movie. I, I don't, mm. I don't understand the, uh, fervor that it's like i don't understand this like groundswell people like give me the next one but whatever i read it it was readable it was harmless it was fine (laughs) uh the one that i'm going to give it to for my feature though is the fourth wing by rebecca yaros book one of the imperium this is one where it's like you know good luck getting a copy of this book like placing a hold on it either digitally or or in person it's uh it's a long wait because we all got copies and but everybody's just reading them so uh, it's fantasy, which I don't normally read a lot of. It's uh, it's dragony, which is another one that I'm like, I don't really need to see people bonding with dragons. You know, I watched How to Train Your Dragon 15 years ago, and I'm good. You is know, that really, how long that came out? Ago? That was a guess, but I think it was. Yikes! Uh, that's yeah, that's a guess. Uh, I I like. I mean, I really, I really, I was invested in the characters. Um, of course, you know, it it uh, it reads very much like a. I don't know, like a like a YA that they couldn't shave off the R rated stuff and mm. so it pushes it into adults because we do have a bit of a triangle. We do have like some forbidden romance. Oh, we do man. have mystery and intrigue. The thing that I was not prepared for was just how steamy it got. Cause it got hella steamy. By the end, I was like, whoa. Some, sometimes so, fantasy books can really do yeah. that. And I'm I'm like, that's not what I came here for. This one certainly went for it. You know, uh, it really did. Um, but all that to say, like when I got to the end of it, the place where you kind of leave this book um, really does kind of, it begs for, for book two. So I got my copy of book two. I'm going to read it. Um, and I think like, while I found the, the housemaid to be kind of like whatever, I, d- I get the appeal of this one and I see like why it's taking off the way it does because okay. it really... It really is a good mix of of action and romance and lust and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know just like a good old fashioned storytelling. So uh, I think I think it's got something, and I I do this one I understand. So yeah, I'm gonna read book two. Any interest here? I know lots of people in the library have been reading, and even staff members. Maybe I don't know. I how do you feel about dragons? I I'm fine with dragons. Okay. I feel like I read a lot of dragon books as a kid, and then I kind of like moved past you OD'd bad on phase. Dragons. yeah maybe and i don't know i also like the 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 elements of fantasy that include like you know love triangles and for like forbidden love i'm yeah. like no not for you not i can pass on that okay. so we'll see we'll see it was written by dorothy sayers did i tell you that does oh that that, that does, does that change your mind spark my interest okay. uh any other hot takes that i have here well you know what um i read the high country by John Jackson Miller. This is a Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds book. You know my love of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. I do. I have to stop reading books by this author because I've read so many now because he writes a lot of the Star Wars books and a lot of the Star Trek books. So it's like unavoidable for me anyway. Because I, you know, I have this rotating book club with some friends of mine where we do sci-fi, we do Star Trek, we do Star Wars, and inevitably, it's like we want to read the new, the latest book, and it's a John Jackson Miller, and like, I'm not going to say he's like a, a bad author or something, but it's just one of those situations where like I do not connect with his work, mm. and I can't put my finger on it, but like even books, like I was looking forward to this book. Um, and I thought, well, maybe this will be the one, and it just wasn't. Mm. I don't know what it is. Do you have authors like that where it's like? It seems like I should like this, and I just don't. I feel like there might be one or two, but usually after I've read about one, maybe two books by an author that I don't connect with, I'm like, all right, I'm just never going to try ever again. Yeah. Well, I made up my mind about this author a while back, Um, but this book I read is the only Strange New World novel that exists, and it wasn't my pick. Somebody else in the book club picked it. Uh, And so I was like, all right, whatever. Um, I'll roll the dice. And I still just didn't didn't Mm -hmm. like it at all. So weird. It keeps being forced on me, but I'm at this point. I'm going to put my foot down and be like, I will not. I support you in that. Godspeed decision. if you guys want to read it, but I can't. Yeah, another one. For me. I feel like most of the books that I read at this point, I like because I'm like, I'm the one choosing to read. Like, I don't have to yeah. read them for a class yeah. or anything for the most part. Like yeah. sometimes a book club, but usually I I choose to participate in the book clubs that are with books that yeah, I want to read. You like sure. And so like 
most of the time I read a book and I'm like, dang it, I'm going to have to give this one another five star rating on Goodreads. Yeah. Just like, you know, like a pansy. I feel yeah. like that's a pansy <laughs> thing to do. Yeah. But I just don't want to read books that I don't yeah. like. I'm no, tired of it. I think that's a, that's a good. And I, I did change. Like for, it was, I feel like about five years ago, I was still in a zone where I was like, if I have cracked the cover of this book, I will read it to its end. Oh, yeah. You know, and I'm just. I got to the point where I was like, I can't take it anymore. I can't do that. You know, I just like, just too little time. Sometimes I even will start a book that I'm really excited about reading and I just won't connect with it in the first few pages or so. And then I'll just be like, all right, whatever. I'll read this later. Yeah. And usually I don't actually read it later, which is a shame, but yeah. Now you should know this question's coming. Did you finish that Star Trek graphic novel? (laughs) I have not. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) I did get an overdue slip about that. So I need to, I need to either read it quickly or. All right. Now I had nothing to do with it. Those are auto generated. So that's not pressure for me. Okay. It's not the only book I've received an overdue slip for. We'll okay. pretend that that's because I was sick. <laughs> sure. Let's say that. Let's yeah. say it's the yeah, sickness. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So the, you told me the book you're reading together. You got any other hot takes on I books? I do have some other hot takes. I want to hear them. Um, I, so we finished reading the Penderwick series, yes. which I mentioned. Mm-hmm. I also read Raising Steam, which is another Discworld novel. Okay. Because I've just been making my way through all the Discworld novels. Got Although it. I have to say, it's like weirdly hard to get audiobooks for Discworld in the right order mm-hmm. like I'll like search for it in Libby and it'll be like n- not the one not the first one that I want to read the second yeah. one I want to read or something and then I have to accept that I'm not going to listen to it as an <laughs> audiobook I'm going to read it with my actual hands <laughs> but anyway uh, I also read Partners in Crime by <laughs> Agatha Christie Tommy and Tuppence Tommy and Tuppence You're nipping at my heels yes I gotta hurry I enjoyed this one it was like very episodic but it had enough sense yeah. of cohesion that I wasn't frustrated. Usually, like, short story kind of books, I feel like I just get frustrated and yeah. kind of bored with. But I enjoyed this one. And I did switch to an audiobook partway through. So that yeah. might be part of why. I didn't particularly enjoy that one. I think because of the, the disconnection in there. It's like, I found them to be connected a weird amount. Like, I almost needed it to be one way or the other. Mm-hmm. You know, like, go the distance or just have them be separate. You know, mm-hmm. it was odd that there was like a couple times this whole thing with like the letters and number 16 yeah. and stuff was mentioned. And then it was like they'd have one little adventure about it and it w- didn't really build to anything. Yeah. yeah. But I listened to it whilst, you know, doing my sewing and it yes. worked. <laughs> it worked out yes. all right. I finished book three of Tommy and Tuppets and I'm currently reading by the pricking of my thumbs, oh, which man. is number four. Um, I haven't finished it yet. I'm I'm getting close. But I would say. Up to the point that I'm at, this is my favorite of the series so far. Okay. So, yeah. So, do with that what you will when you get there. But Yeah. I, I have to pick up the speed if you I'm, I'm going to beat you. You better You not. did have a head you start, not. though. Yeah, so like about 20 this years. This yeah. totally fair race. That's true. I read the first one, and I think in 2021. Or no, 2001. Yeah. In so. 2021. I mean, 2001. Yeah. Those are basically the same <laughs> of course. year. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'm also currently reading The Secret of Platform 13, which is an Eva Ibbotson um, oh, yeah. junior novel. I've been reading a few of those lately. Is that the same one that you were reading last time? or This is a, it, different? This is a different one. Okay. And this is one that I'm pretty sure I read maybe in like high school. Okay. But I'm not positive that I finished it. Okay. I know exactly where it's going just based on the kind of book that it sure. is. Sure. But I don't actually have any memories of where it went. And so I kind of wonder if I read the first few chapters and went oh, out. But yeah. I'm enjoying it this time. So okay. I don't think I'm going to wimp out. I read a book of hers called One Dog and His Boy. And I was not a fan. That's you the only not? thing I've ever read by her. I don't so. think I've ever heard of that one. Oh, well, it exists. It's real. I didn't make it up. Was it like a sad dog story? Something like I spent so long now. I don't really remember. I just remember being like, nope. I say as though there are dog stories that aren't sad. I know, right? The only thing I didn't tell you about was my comic books. I'm still catching up on Wonder Woman because I, well, when Wonder Woman just had that anniversary, we did some posts like mm-hmm. read these Wonder Woman books and stuff. It kind of got me in the zone to be like, I haven't read Wonder Woman in a while. So I picked up where I left off um, in the Rebirth era and I read a bunch back to back to back to back. So I swif- switched through a bunch of different authors, just did um, Steve Orlando's run and Mariko Tamaki's, which I normally like her stuff and I didn't really like her Wonder Woman. She has a That's super a girl. Yeah. A Supergirl book called Being Super, which is great. I think you'd like that one. 
Um, but this, yeah, it didn't, didn't really work for me. And then I read a Mycroft Holmes in the Apocalypse Handbook, also by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Hmm. Uh, part of that, not, I mean, it's sort of like adjacent to the novel series that I was reading. And this was weird. It didn't feel like the novels at all and was really like violent and kind oh of gosh. gory. And I was like, not what I expected. So yeah, kind it of a weird. It pulled a fast uh, one on you. It did. Weird, weird zone for me uh, with that. But yeah, I'm enjoying By the Pricking of My Thumbs and that's pretty much it for my reading. Anything else on your list? I don't think so, okay. other than my usual webtoons. Uh, of course, tis the season for Spotify Wrapped. Absolutely. How was yours? It's kind of what I expected. Mine too. I'm pretty basic. Yeah. Yeah. Although I was surprised that I didn't have the Beatles like... Yeah, I mean, I had two of the Beatles, but the Beatles as a group... As a group. I didn't have in there. But they're, if they're still represented by like the individual Beatles, yeah. then I feel it like it counts. You're right. You're right. Here are my top artists for uh, 2023. John Williams... And that's, I think, because Indiana Jones, I was listening to a lot of Indiana Jones, really like that Dial of Destiny score. Also, for Star Wars Day in May, I listened to a bunch of Star Wars stuff while I was reading a Star Wars book. And I read my son the first Harry Potter, and we listened Ah. to the theme. So, you know. But it's John Williams, Paul McCartney, who, of course, uh, Uh, Guster, (laughs) which I went to that concert and ended up really getting into Guster. The Rolling Stones... Uh, and my t- all of my top songs were from their album, Bigger Bang, which was their most recent album before Hackney Diamond. So I was like refreshing myself on that. So that's why. Uh, but my number one artist was Ringo Starr, which does make sense. But I it still was surprised. I wouldn't have guessed that it would have been like Ringo himself. What would you have guessed? I don't know. Like Rolling Stones makes sense to me because I was excited about the new album and I know that I listened to a lot of Rolling Stones. But I guess I didn't feel like I was just constantly like rolling Ringo, but I guess I was. So I think I would have guessed McCartney. Okay. Yeah. That Which you tracks. Know, he's number whatever, three or four. So still not bad. So what about you? What were your top? Okay. My top artists. Number five. All like Irish folk. And Actually, sh- no. Sea shanty heavy. There wasn't any sea shanties. I oh was my surprised. gosh! I know. Wow. But then I realized I don't. Who are always, you even? <laughs> I don't always listen to sea shanties on Spotify. Oh, okay. I you got those on cassette. <laughs> 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 well, I have like a CD that has not sea shanties, but Irish music. And then I okay. feel like some of the other ones I listen to on YouTube so that I can hear them before I try and play them on the guitar. Got it. Oh yeah. Okay. So I think that's I think that's where the sea shanty discrepancy okay. is coming. <laughs> Yeah. The sea shanty discrepancy also sounds like a book that you and Caleb would read out loud together. It does. Okay. It does. It does. Okay. So number five is Chet Baker. All right. Yeah. We talked about Chet Baker. I really like his Back in House Things, stuff. I think. I think that's right. A long yeah. time ago. A yeah. long time ago. Number four, Nora Jones. Sure. Not a surprise for yeah. me at all. Okay. Number three was Jack Johnson. Yeah. Um, Which is like, uh, like in between dreams, like better together. Like yeah. Yeah. I know Jack okay. Johnson. Yeah. Okay. Those are like, <laughs> those are the ones that people know if okay. they don't know Jack Johnson. Okay. Uh, number two was Harry Styles, which I was a little surprised Interesting. about. Interesting. I feel like that's higher. Okay. That's higher than I would have expected Harry yeah. Styles to be. Yeah, I did like Sign of the Times. That's that's kind of an older one, but I liked that, yeah. Jack. I feel like Harry Styles is one that for a while I was like, oh yeah, there's like one or two Harry Styles songs that I like. And then at some point I put on one of his albums and I was like, wait, I know all of these. You and love I like them all. all of these. You love them all. Yeah. How did I not know this information? And number one, Bell and Sebastian. There you go. That's what I would have expected. Remember when they were like coming to Ithaca and then they like canceled I know. or something? I was so that mad. was like your one shot. But they are coming back in 2024 <gasps> to Toronto. Okay. So we're going to go. Okay. We have to. Got your passports all up to date or your enhanced I driver's license? I don't because I got married, but That's I right. will. You better hurry. I've got some time. I've got some time. Okay. So no surprises on there for you. Not really. Although the hairstyles being that high was a little bit of a surprise. That's interesting. Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that for you either. I didn't see the John Williams coming, but it, I mean, I get it. Like I can, mm-hmm. but I feel like that's almost like a cheat because it was for specific things. It wasn't Sometimes that like, happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think yeah. the reason Harry Styles is that high is because there was like two songs that I put on a playlist that I played then over and over and yeah. over again. And I think that yeah. that bumped up Harry That'll Styles a little it. bit. Well, a lot of, I think some of the Ringo things, he has a couple of songs um, that came out recently. One's called Coming Undone and one is called Feeling the Sunlight. And I really like to play those, mm. uh, like on my ukulele or mm-hmm. guitar. And so I listen to them a lot because of that. So, you know, 
I understand but last year, how that goes. Last year, I read um, this big biography on Liza Minnelli. I don't even know why, but I was I just did. And so I listened to a lot of Liza Minnelli music like while I was reading it. So it was like, your top artist is Liza Minnelli. And I'm like, well, I can't tell anyone that. That's, That's really like, I keep that funny. under my hat. So, But now, I've, you know, everybody knows. Now you've knows, revealed so. this information. Yeah, what are you going to okay. do? Well, what an eventful bookshelf this Absolutely. has been. We are going to be back in two weeks for our Christmas Spectacular, oh, where yeah. we're going to be talking about uh, the, princess the Princess Switch. Switch. Princess Switch. Okay. I'm so At excited. At least number one. We'll At see. Least number one. We'll see where my heart leads me. If you, you know. watch number one and you're like, this was fun, but it needed more action, okay. you might like the second and third one more. Okay. All right. Yeah. Needed more action. That, that's not <laughs> what I was expecting you to say, but Okay. If it needs more action. So yes, you can watch The Princess Switch along with us. It is Netflix, we've confirmed. So you can you can watch it right on there. And please, you know, reach out and tell us what you think. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at David A. Howe Public Library. X for a little while longer. We're still on the fence about that, but <laughs> DA Hell Library. Uh, we also have a Tumblr. And yeah, tell us in all those places your favorite things about the movie and we'll include them uh, in the next step. Absolutely. Maybe. If we feel like if it. If we feel like yeah. it. If you say things that are interesting. Yeah, if you say things that we don't like it, We'll just ignore it. Yeah. That's yeah. the kind of power that we wield. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, remember, it is the holiday season here at the library. And we got a lot of fun things going on. Uh, if you're in the area, we've got Nutcracker the weekend of December 8th. So uh, 7 o'clock show on December 8th, 2 o'clock show on December 9th. Uh, always a fun time. It's a, one of our favorite annual traditions. And we've got all the trees in the front lawn uh, that the Lions put up yes. and different community organizations decorated. They so look so pretty. The library looks great. Allie and I got a little unhinged decorating this year, <laughs> we I did think. Get we really we left decorating. no stone unturned in finding decorations. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we have decorations up that haven't seen the light of day since the early 1980s. I think that's true. I think that's so. true. Because we spent, was it Tuesday? We spent... Almost all day decorating. Yeah, really. we should have got hazard paid because we were really digging through the bowels <laughs> and true. the belfries That's of uh, this place. And so. I didn't, I didn't tell you this actually, but on Tuesday night when I went home and went to sleep, I dreamed about decorating the library for Christmas. That makes sense. I woke up and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It followed you home. Yep. Yeah. We still haven't put up our tree. Uh, My we, son is not happy about that. Do you guys do a artificial tree? Yes, we do an artificial. tree. Yeah, you don't have to well, call me out. then it means you can put it up whenever you want. You don't have to like go That's out true. and find one. That's true. Like you could have it up all year if you want to. That's true. My There's sister-in-law did that. You. That's kind yeah. of fun. Yeah. And now she just turned the lights on and she was like, there, see? <laughs> <laughs> now it's appropriate to have the lights on. Oh, so. I love that. Yeah. It's efficient. That's what it is. Okay. Well, again, join us in two weeks for our talk about the Princess Switch. It's going to be a good time. Oh, yeah. Okay. See you then. We can say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha